Hello. Today we're going to look at the dark horse of the Roland Jupiter family, the Roland Jupiter 6. was introduced in 1983. The original intention was that the 6 would be a cheaper alternative to the Jupiter 8. And Lord knows, I really wanted Jupiter 8. In fact, that's why I bought 6. I thought that this would be my low-cost entry into the Jupiter 8 world. And in a sense, that's true. And in a sense, it's absolutely not. It's a very similar synth in terms of architecture, although the 6 can do things that the 8 cannot. But it is not a Jupiter 8, it's a Jupiter 6. And it does things and it sounds like only a Jupiter 6 can. I describe this as the dark horse and I think that's really befitting. The 6 is like this kind of 
emo sibling to the eight, where the eight is classy and brassy and always beautiful. A bit like the Junos in the way that the eight seems to make beauty at every turn. The six does not. The six can make bad sounds. What is essential in order to appreciate the six is to appreciate it for what it is. And as others have described it, it's a workhorse. And so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture and um, sort of explain what's available in terms of sound shaping capabilities. And I'm just going to fart around and just play with the Jupiter 6 and appreciate the Jupiter 6 for what it is. Okay, so what do we have? This is a two oscillator synthesizer, one oscillator here, VCO1, and then VCO2. The tuning dial is a little bit weird and it's like a fine tune control. So you get all of the individual steps that sort of create like sevenths and fifths by adjusting the range dial carefully, of course, with the mix control in the middle. <laughs> a word on the oscillator shapes, we have many of them. What is extra badass about the oscillator shapes is that you can pick one like this, so I can go square, saw, sine. But if you mash them together, you can have multiples at the same time. So I can have simultaneous. You also have noise. We've got lots of pulse width modulation to make Nick Bat happy. Ooh. Regarding the LFO, we have lots of different shapes. Square, as well as random. Awesome. <laughs> but you've got two LFOs, not just this one here, but this one down here, which is an LFO with a button. So if I stop this, it's like a performance LFO. And you can apply it to the oscillator, the filter. It has its own little rate control. It's just a sine wave LFO. And it has a rise control so that when I push this, it comes in. <laughs> it's wicked. And then returning to the oscillators in an important point is that you have cross modulation, which is like FM synthesis in a way. Yeah, crossmod is awesome. Plus, you also have uh, an envelope control for crossmod, meaning that we can use envelope one to sort of sweep the crossmod dial for us, making a sound that goes like zingy and then sort of returns. It's just like nuts. So all the kind of zingy, strange, like dark, kind of warbly, greebly pads are possible, as well as sync. 
And interestingly, this is sync where one oscillator sort of locks the phase of another oscillator, but we've got arrows. We can have sync in one direction or the other. So meaning I can have VCO1 sync VCO2 or VCO2 sync VCO1, but then you can create like a sort of loop where they're syncing and cross modding each other for even more crazy tone generation. <laughs> So that's VCO2 syncing to VCO1. Classic sync sound. And then I've got modulation of the VCOs. So I can apply LFO to both VCOs if I push, or just VCO2, which is the one that is syncing. So then I can like zing that. Possible thing this. So nuts. Very, very powerful. Like, really powerful. I don't, it's just really good design. So then this filter. to the folks who say that they uh, like analog synths because they don't have any stair stepping on the faders. We never played with a Jupiter 6, clearly, because you can hear stair stepping on the filter. <laughs> because of course it is a analog synth, absolutely, but it's got patch memory. And that means that the Jupiter has to sort of stair-step parameters to be able to remember them. It's not a very advanced computer that was in this thing and therefore not able to kind of interpret, you know, the sort of infinity of fader positions very accurately. So there is stair-stepping. You can still sweep things, it's still real time. But it's a quirk of using synths in the early days of, you know, CPUs and computer memory. Yeah. The amount of low end that the filter can kick out is nuts. So I'm kind of messing with this filter and then... What I should do is use the bender, which is for that exact purpose. So I can turn this up. Because I can apply the bender to the filter or the oscillator or individual oscillators, turn them on and off. Which is especially interesting if you're syncing things. So I can push VCO1 around while VCO2 is syncing to VCO1, thereby timbrally. <laughs> yeah. Cup of tea and my Jupiter. So then bandpass, you do this by pushing together high pass and low pass and you get bandpass. Wow. I love that you can hold the bender at its fullest extent whilst adjusting the VCF like trimmer and find the sort of the highest position you want to go. And then when you return it, you can. Nice. High pass. Ooh. Ho 
Oh! Oh! The base! That's nice. Cutting like acid filter, which just picks out like creates its own melodies as well. And of course, it is um, playable across the keyboard. If we, what am I doing? actually check to see if it is in tune. Sounds nice. Whether or not. Whew. So that's resonant filter with keyboard tracking all the way up so that the keyboard is playing the filter. modulation on that. But you are hearing the oscillators bleed through. Fitting any Roland Poly, you have an arpeggiator that can go up, down, and up, down if you push both of the boutons together. Let me know if there's a difference, depending on which one is flashing. Um, but obviously then, then you get into the wonderful, lovely stuff. Um, <laughs> lovely stuff meaning classic Roland sort of, you know, loopy arpeggios with loads of release. Um, and then there's like CV inputs on the back. There are basic CV inputs because this was in the age of control voltage, the first age, in the first age of control voltage, uh, including interesting things like there's an arpeggio clock input so that you can clock the arpeggio to like the trigger outs on the A80, for example, or anything. Um, and then there's a patch shift so you can change the patch with an analog clock. Um, and then you can like CV the filter and do like jazzy stuff like that. I mean, crazy. And then you've got patches, obviously, and I think it's 48. It's one, two, three, four, six banks of eight, six, eight, 48. Let's just go with that. Uh, you can do splits, by the way, where you have different sounds assigned to different parts of the keyboard with the four, two and the two, four, depending on how many voices you want on each side. Um, and then something else that I want to mention, unison. Um, because that's just one of the things you get at Jupiter 6 for. The sound just like explodes. That ah, like blah. <laughs> See, it's got this clever assign mode here. If you have these both together, then it will be a monophonic. But, 
But if you just plug one in, it dynamically assigns the voices to sort of give you notes, as it were. It sort of splits the unison apart and gives you the notes that you try and push down. So it's really clever. It's like dynamically assigning all six voices as best it can. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. You can spend time doing that. Uh, so I think that's kind of like the main features, really. So I think let's just play around, fart around, make more sounds, because I think that's what you're seeing is that, like, this is a synth discovery. Like I say, you can make bad sounds and you can sort of, you can take it out of sweet spots. But I must say that when you find the sweet spots with this, it is, yeah, it's Jupiter 6. And actually, the way I've got this set up is I have the key step synced by sync to the 880. So if I hit play on the key step, it plays the 880. But then the key step MIDI sequences the Jupiter 6 from LFO just into a sort of like uh, sort of multiple of the clock rate. Yeah. anything without black notes the answer is no I cannot of VCO1, which is being synced by VCO2.
doesn't suck.
Nice. 